All right, welcome back to video two. In this video, we're going to continue on and we're going to do the check if the ship overlaps, and then we're also going to build the user input into our game. So I will, uh, I've already demoed those in the first one, but I'll re demo those as we build them. So let's get started. Now we're going to build the check if ship overlaps. So I'll explain how this one works. All right, we are still on the computer turn. So the way that after it fits, okay, we got a good fit. Now we're gonna check to see if it overlaps. So we have the board that we're passing it, the row, the column, the orientation, and the ship length. We've done all that. So now let's go ahead and build this ship overlaps function down here. All right, so just like you saw above, board, row, column, orientation, and ship length. We need all those. So what we're gonna do first is check to see if the orientation is horizontal. So if it's horizontal, we're gonna run this. If it's vertical, we're gonna run this, essentially the same thing, but the other direction. So we're gonna do a loop. We're gonna look through the range of the board and we're gonna start with columns. So the column that we gave it, let's say that we gave it zero, and then we're gonna take the ship length. So column plus the ship length. Well, let's say that we give it a higher number like five, and then we gotta add two to that. So five plus two is seven. So we're gonna start and stop. We're gonna start at five, and then we're gonna go to seven. And we're gonna loop through those and see, is there an X? Because if there is, then there is already a ship there and we can't place it. So what we're gonna do is check to see in that row if there's an X and we're gonna return true. Essentially what we're saying is there is already a ship there, it overlaps. Same thing with vertical, just like that. So for I in range, we're gonna loop through row. So same concept, let's say our row is seven and our ship length is two. Oh, that'd be too high. We'll just use five again, plus our ship length is seven. So we're gonna start at five, go to seven, Check to see if there's an X right here and that in that column. If there is, return true, and we're going to have to try it again. Ideally, what we want is return false. So that false means there's not a ship overlap. So we'll come back up here and we say if false, then we'll go ahead and continue. And now we can start placing our ship. So let's do that. So if we Check again, this is similar to before. First, we're gonna check if it's horizontal or vertical. So if it's horizontal, we're gonna execute this. If it's vertical, we're gonna run this. So horizontal, we wanna loop through, similar to what we did before, the placing of the board, same kind of concept. We're gonna start at the column, we'll say five. We're gonna go through the column plus the ship link. So we'll say five plus two is seven. So we're gonna place an X, that's single equal, five, six, and uh, Actually, that's exclusive, so just on five and six. Same thing vertical, we're gonna do is place an X, we'll say five here, we'll say five plus two, so from five to seven, so it would be five and six. And then once we're done, we're gonna break out of that loop, and in this case, the computer has placed all, it'll loop through until it places all the ships in length of ships. Okay, so that's the, that is the computer. And essentially we're gonna do the same thing except for now we need to add the user input. So we could essentially copy all of this code here. That's gonna be all the same. The only difference is gonna be this orientation row and column. We are gonna put it rather than enter random. So let's grab this. I wanna make sure I don't get any typos. Okay, we're gonna tab this over a bit. Oh, no, that's in the right place. Okay, so here's a computer and then here is us. Place ship means there's two, two prompts. One is in the beginning, we're gonna ask the user to place the ship. And that means we need orientation, row and column. Once we place the ships, then we need, then we're gonna start guessing. And we're gonna just ask for row and column. We're not gonna ask for orientation. So in the first part of this, we're going to place ship. That means we're placing them, we're not guessing them. All right, so place ship with the length of, 
And essentially what we're doing is we're, as we're looping through the two, three, three, four, and five, we're gonna print that out and tell them, okay, we're, we need you to place a two ship or a three ship. Then we're now gonna start using this user input function, which we're gonna build next. So row column orientation, let's go ahead and ask the user for those three. So let's go down here and start building this one. This one is a little bit long, so we will spend the rest of the video on, on user input. All right, so as I mentioned in that previous variable, we're gonna pass in place ship. So the first one we're gonna do is guess, or, is, or place our ship. So that's this block of code right here. So that's this three row column orientation. If we're guessing, we don't need orientation. So that's this else here, which is similar. And we're gonna do just row and column. Okay, so let's go back here. So the first one, I'm gonna do a while loop and basically I'm gonna keep asking until I get a valid input because there's possible errors. Somebody could enter nothing. They could enter double digits. They could enter the wrong thing. So I'll do a try and accept. The try is going to first ask for an input and it's gonna ask H or V. And then we're gonna to need to uppercase that in case they have a lowercase. So it'll accept H or V uppercase or lowercase. And then we wanna to check to say, did they actually enter H or V? And if they did, okay, we can break out of this and we're done. If they didn't, type error means, let's say they didn't enter anything, then print a valid and it'll loop again. So once it's got that, then it's done with this loop. Then it's on to grabbing the row. So let's take the row and do another try and accept. So try row, ask for a number from one to eight. Then we wanna make sure that they actually chose one through eight. So we'll go if row one through three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If that is true, then we'll set the row to what number they gave us. Now, if you remember in human readable, we go one through eight, but the actual computer list stores it in zero through seven. So that's why we want to make sure it's an integer and subtract one. Once we've got that, then we'll break out of it. We've got our row. If they don't enter anything or enter something wrong, it will loop through and do it again. Now we're on to our third one, a third loop, and we're gonna do another try and accept. This time the column, we'll ask for input and we'll ask, please enter the column. We're gonna make sure that it is uppercase so they could do upper and lower, and it has to be between A through H. If it is, then what we need to do is do that conversion. So let's say they give a column of H, then we're gonna go back up here to this dictionary, letters to numbers, and if they give us H, then it's gonna convert it to seven. So we'll come back down here. And so H then goes to here, converts to seven. And once we got that, we'll break it out and we're gonna return those in just a moment. So row, column, and orientation, those three that we've just asked for will be returned. And then one last thing in this column, if they do not enter the correct input, it will loop and try again. So that is when they are placing the ships. So one more thing, if they are not placing a ship, then let's say they are just guessing ships, we don't need to know if it's this direction or this direction, the orientation. So then we just need to do the same two of row, so here's row, same exact thing, and here is the column. And then once we get that, we'll return row and column. So that is our user input. So let's come back up here and we will pass in the user input, we'll get the row column and orientation. So similarly to what we have done up here, same thing's gonna happen. Check ship if fits. It's going to give the, the length, row, column, orientation. Then it's gonna to check to see if it overlaps, same function there. Board, row, column, orientation, and the length. And we wanna make sure that it doesn't overlap. If it does, we can continue. And then orientation H, if that's horizontal. And then we're gonna loop through. So let's say we gave it a five plus the length of two, then it's gonna go ahead and place it on that board, both five and six. And we'll demo this in just a moment. And then here, same thing here, row. So if it's horizontal, we'll go ahead and execute this one. If it's vertical, we'll go ahead and execute this one. 
And then we're going to print the board because every time we do the next ship, so if we print the, or if we uh, place the two, then we got to print the board so we can see it again. Then we'll place the three ship, print the board, and we'll go through and break when we're all done uh, placing that ship. And then we'll come back up here and continue our loop until all ships are done. All right, let's go ahead and do a demo on this one and then we'll be done with this video. So I think, yeah, just running it in the debugger. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll just uh, break it at when it places the ship. So we'll do a horizontal. All right. Do, 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 do. Yeah, horizontal and right there. So let's go ahead and run it. And then the computer is going to go ahead and place five ships. So we got to continue through those. All right, now it's asked for us. So we're going to do like what we did before. We're going to say horizontal and then we'll continue. And you can see what here, it's asked for that. It's got horizontal, so that's going to continue. Now it's going to ask, it's going to try for the row, and so we're going to choose five. So in just a moment, it's going to ask for row, so we're going to say five. All right, now it's going to check to see if it's in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it is. And then it's going to subtract one. So it's actually going to be, we're going to see it in the fifth row because we printed out this way. Uh, but we'll, we'll see it in just a moment. All right, now it's going to ask for the column. And we're going to choose A. So let's go ahead and do A. All right, and then let's continue. It's going to convert it. All right, and then it's going to return row, column, and orientation. Now we've got the input, so we can check to see if it fits. Okay, it fits. Now we're going to check to see if it overlaps. It goes through a couple times. It does not overlap, so we'll continue. And we'll check to see there's the orientation. Now we're going to place it on the board. So 4i in range. Okay, board row. We should get the first one here. Uh, let's see. I chose five, correct? Yeah, so it did subtract. This is the computer board that we're seeing. So I chose five, it put it on there. And we'll run it one more time. Okay, so now it put it right there. And we'll keep running it and we'll print the board. There, it printed the board. Okay, we'll see it in here just one second. Okay. All right, so there you go. Now it's on five, one, and two. So we are done with that portion. Let's go back and we have done check overlap and input. And then the next one we're gonna do, check to see if it's hit. And then we'll build out the turns between us and the computer. And then one final demo just to wrap it all up. All right, thanks for tuning into this video and look forward to seeing you in part three. See you soon.